Hi and welcome to this video where my concentration has been on the oil cooler here and also the oil feed pipe to the turbo. So basically what I've done is I've removed this, um, checked if it's dirty or whether it's clogged, I've cleaned it out and there's also a gauze filter down there in the feed pipe to the turbo so I've removed that, also checked that to see if it's blocked or not and also cleaned it and also as I had some requests to actually have a look inside the DPF that I took off last week I have actually opened up the DPF at the end of the video just so you can have a look inside um, it's not here at the moment I have chucked a hose into it to try and sort of clean it out a little bit um, but I'll put photos of that at the end as well so, anyway, so hopefully you'll enjoy this video and it might be of use to you um, and thank you for watching and have a good weekend so it might be worth having a quick overview of things so I'll include some photos here and a little bit of video so that we can just see there there's the oil cooler and there's also the pipe there at the back that's leading up to the top of the turbo and I believe there is a gauze filter in the bottom of that in the banjo bolt so there's our oil filter the top of it there and the oil cooler we can obviously you see the alternator and the air conditioning pump in that so here's everything labeled like so and obviously that's the oil cooler that I'm going to remove in this video right then so removing the oil cooler so we need a Torx 30 for this and it's probably worth actually undoing these bolts in a cross diagonal manner if you can just so as you remove it you don't sort of put any undue stress on it so obviously I've not done that I've just going around normally but it probably is a wise move because it's aluminium so it's quite soft so we get these so I've started to undo it gently now just to try and equalize the stress of undoing those so we'll pop these out now one of the things I didn't actually realize was this coolant runs through this as well so it's not just an oil cooler it does rely on coolant to assist in that cooling so I sort of thought it was perhaps air cooled and done on the basis of fins cooling fins but as we can see there we've actually got coolant starting to come out so one thing I did overlook here was although I took the nut off the other side which held the bracket on there's actually still a double thread on the other side still holding this in place so if we flip over there now and have a quick look that is still stuck down there it is so this is one of those E5 um, socket screws had those on the clutch so now it should actually come off now be prepared you will get a little bit of a mess here, because there's obviously oil and coolant mixing together now so it's all getting a little bit messy there so what you've got there is sort of four orifices um, with four seals on so I'll just try to wipe that off just to show the holes a little bit clearer so you can see there's the oil side on the left and the coolant side on the right okay so I'm going to give that a little bit of a clean up with some brake cleaning fluid or brake cleaner so you can see the oil actually coming out when I was squirting it into the housing of the filter so here's a photo showing the different passageways there that's a little bit cleaner that picture and then what I'm going to do is just flush this through with brake cleaner 
So one of the things I was actually disappointed with was this was actually all clean. So if I've got a top end issue, which I presume is oil starvation that's caused the top end issue, then I was expecting to see some sort of blockage, especially in the oil cooler, that might be restricting the oil flow to the top of the engine. So to find this is actually clean, I'm starting to think the car has actually probably been serviced quite well and the oil's been changed regular. Um, which obviously then makes it a little bit more confusing as to why the top end's gone. But that's definitely cleaned out. So I've put petrol in there, I've let it just soak a little bit um, to see if we get any little bits of debris. I mean there's a few little bits but um, there's definitely nothing there restricting the flow. So I'm just going to leave that to soak. So here's a few photos showing that oil cooler. Now it's been cleaned up a bit. And those are the passageways. So it is like a stack of um, plates that are separated. So you could see that it could clog quite easily if you were to neglect it. But there we go. Right then, so now checking the oil drain back pipe for the turbo. Okay, so we are check this pipe as well. So it's a 7mm socket for the Jubilee clips. So this is the drain pipe from the bottom of the turbo. So we we check this, just make sure this is clear. But like I said, I'm not seeing any signs of oil neglect at the moment. So I mean, we've had the sump off and the strainer was perfectly clear. The bottom of the engine's perfectly clean. Um, you know, yeah, there was a there was a slight amount of thick sort of oil at the bottom of the sump. First, obviously, because it can't be fully drained out, um, so it doesn't seem to be a problem with maintenance there. All right, so that's our pipe off now. I'm just going to ram a screwdriver straight down that. Twist it around. Again, there's nothing, no problem with that at all. So anyway, so we'll pop that back on then. So I don't know whether I'm missing something here. Obviously, we've got to get the oil to the top of the engine, unless the oil pump itself is actually faulty and it's not delivering the oil. Um, that would be rather disappointing because that would be quite a big job to do on top of all this, especially if the top of the engine is actually already damaged. Would it be worth the cost? Okay then. Right then, so let's go on to checking the turbo feed pipe. So it might be worth just having a few photos here, just because those are the copper washers on each side of the banjo fitting. And the one on the left is the lower one, and that actually has a gauze filter in. So that's the part that often clogs up and causes all the starvation to the turbo. So there is that filter. I've sort of highlighted it and lit it up slightly there. Again, that's all now clear. Um, but anyway, so let's see if this was actually blocked. So it's a 10 millimeter hex key to undo that. Now bearing in mind those copper washers should technically be replaced. Right, so that's the one with the filter in. Now they, they often say actually to remove that gauze filter completely because it apparently blocks so easily. Now I think this car's done about 130,000 miles. So it's, it's pretty high mileage. Um, so you'd expect that this could justifiably be blocked. And what do we find? Perfectly clear. It's completely clean. So we we'll zoom in on this now. So there's definitely nothing there. And I'll shine a torch through just so that we can actually see through this banjo 
uh, thread, as it were, the bolt. I'm just going to check in there as well, see if I can see anything obvious. So there we go. So the light's coming through that gauze filter in its entirety. There's no blockage in there at all. So like I said, that's sort of good for the fact that the car perhaps has been serviced, but then makes it even more peculiar why we should have a top-end issue if everything's been serviced. Right, so I'm going to take the top off now. So that's again a 10 millimeter hex key. Because obviously what I want to do is check that the pipe is actually clear as well. So I'm going to remove this pipe and I'll blow compressed air down it just to ensure that it's actually perfectly clear. So those are our two copper washers there. Like so. You can see that one's got some sort of heat damage to it. Um, almost like some burning. Perhaps because of the heat of the turbo and the exhaust. Again, I'm going to check through that. As you can see, that's perfectly clear. Hmm. Like I said, I took the pipe off and flushed it through a bit and then blew some compressed air in just to check. Okay then, so let's refit the turbo feed pipe. So like I say, what you are supposed to do is replace those copper washers. Um, but as you're probably getting the general idea of how I work now, I try not to buy any car parts if at all possible. So I'm just going to smooth these copper washers out on some fine wet and dry paper. So hopefully that gives them a new flat surface for them to reseal. So that's the one with the gauze filter. Okay, and then what we need to do is obviously set the torque wrench to 22 Newton meters for the two banjo bolts. I believe that's the correct setting. In the Haynes manual it says 22, um, but it didn't differentiate between the two diesel engines in the Mini. It just gave the one setting. So hopefully it is the same for both engines. So I can only do what the manual, the information I've got to hand tells me, and that's 22. Obviously they could snap quite easily because they're hollow. Right then, so we've got our new banjo seals there. So we make sure it's all nice and clean. Obviously you don't want any grit on there to work against the seal. Let me just pop that in. Just tighten that up. So this does move around quite a bit. So it might be worth just putting the bottom in as well, so you can try and get things lined up. So like I said, I'm going to leave the gauze filter in there, on the basis it hasn't got blocked up. Obviously if this engine starts to work and I actually am able to drive this car, I can always keep a close eye on the turbo and make sure that doesn't block up in the future. I mean, having a filter there is probably better, really, because you obviously don't want things going to the turbo if you can help it. So we've just pinched those up now to 22 newton meters with a 10 millimeter hex key, like I say, so that's not very tight at all. And then just do the same on the top. So the pipe just slightly moved there, so I actually sort of just pushed that back later on. Okay then, so refitting the oil cooler. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just slightly key the surface of this oil cooler. Um, 
it's probably best not to actually do what I'm doing here because you can buy a new one of those oil coolers with the seals for around 20 to 25 pounds which obviously would make far more sense than trying to sort of save that 25 pounds by doing what I'm going to do which is I'm obviously going to clean these seals I've loosened them and sort of um, pulled them forward cleaned them all um, so effectively completely unsettled them all over again I'll give it all a bit of a clean and I'm gonna apply a little bit of sealant part of me thought perhaps I should just risk it without the sealant because um, I was sort of un unsure really whether the sealant would actually make make it better or not um, because in some ways the sealant really is just for metal to metal contact um, and it may not be designed to actually be put onto rubber seals so I really am going out on a limb here and this could well bite me in the backside later on especially when you've got coolant and oil together you don't really want the two mixing so if any of those seals fail we're either going to get oil squirting out all over the engine bay the coolant and the oil mixing which is obviously going to make a complete mess um, so this probably is quite a foolish thing to do really um, but for me it's hopefully going to save 25 pounds and I'm unsure whether this engine's any good anyway so I'd, I'm quite reluctant to spend any money on it so I'm just going to tighten these up I'm going to tighten them up by hand because I haven't, actually haven't got a newton meter um, figure for these so I'm assuming it's probably around 25 newton meters um, but I'm just going to do it hand tight again you don't want to go too mad in case you start stripping threads but hopefully that will actually seal we'll find out when we get around to starting the car it will either be okay or be a complete disaster um, and then I'll have to do it all over again especially if the engine works So yeah, it may be a short-sighted thing, this. Okay then, right, so let's take a quick peek inside the DPF filter. So it's a 13mm socket for this, to undo this strap. I am quite impressed with the way that you can actually service this and clean it. I do think that that is actually a really good idea. So I'm just going to mark this as well, just to help with alignment. Um, so that the exhaust will easily go back together again when I put it back on the car. Now I found trying to get it out was quite difficult. I tried to sort of tap it like this with a rubber mallet. Um, but it's, it's very awkward. So in the end I found that if you held it upright and smacked those two brackets it came off a lot easier. So we've got like a a metal gauze sort of seal there which I presume goes on the very end and then we've got like a joint or a seal there again that I think goes further down towards the base of the the DPF so obviously this side is the DPF and the other side is the cat so I, th I don't think it was blocked anyway um, no lights came on the dashboard or anything. But part of me obviously thinks I should at least try and flush it through while it's actually off the car. I suppose that would make some sense. So there's the cat in there. So there's our soot. So I suppose it is quite effective at collecting soot. And there's the cat in there at the end. So like I said, I will probably flush these through. Um, but again, I'm going to probably be a bit naughty and cut corners. And I'm going to use a bit of gunk and some water. 
just to see what happens. Right, so here's some photos of that now, close up. I've obviously given it a bit of a wash. So we can actually see in there. That sort of gets your eyes going a bit there. And as close as I can go. So like I said, this is after I've given it a bit of a cleaning with some gunk and water. And there's the catalytic converter part. I'll try and zoom in a bit on that. That makes my eyes go pretty funny. Anyway, so on to reference photographs, which you can pause to view for longer. So here's the front of the engine. And then we put our labels on that. And then another angle, a bit close up of that oil cooler. And some labels again. And here from the other angle, so you can see the bracket that holds the um, electrical cable on to the temperature sensor. And there's the, the socket there for that temperature sensor. Right, and so here's the oil cooler with the banjo bolts. So this is the oil cooler after it's been cleaned, showing the oil and the coolant paths. And a little peek inside there. Do a close up if we can. So I'll try to get a little bit of a polish on the top of it. Another angle there. And obviously there's the banjo bolts, one with the gauze filter and our copper washers. Again, the close up of that gauze and clearly showing that it's perfectly clean there. And again, the banjo bolt with the two copper washers. And then there's our seals there and all the parts. Right then, so you've been watching removing the oil cooler and the oil feed pipe on a 2009 Mini R56. And thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you service and maintain your car within your budget. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in March 2022. And I can be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.